Hello, I'm Dr. Sandra Freihofer. Welcome to Medicine Matters. What's new in adult immunization for 2022? Here's the latest update from ACIP, the Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices. The new schedule is available on the CDC website and published in the Annals of Internal Medicine. Here's why it matters. We're now in year three of the COVID pandemic. That's why for 2022, having a new updated schedule matters now more than ever. It's a reminder of the other vaccine preventable diseases we need protection from. The COVID pandemic has put a damper on vaccine coverage overall. At first, we weren't supposed to give COVID vaccines with other vaccines, but that rule has been lifted. COVID vaccines can now be co-administered with other vaccines. So there's now no reason to delay getting caught up on needed immunizations that may have been missed due to COVID. This ACIP update summarizes who needs which vaccine and when. And as usual, some of the recommendations have changed. Please know and rest assured, COVID vaccines are in the schedule. They're not on the graphics, but they're listed first in the vaccine notes section with a link to current COVID vaccine recommendations. It's likely more COVID vaccine options will be added before the next schedule update next year. There's also a link to CDC's interim clinical considerations, a live document that's also updated regularly. The schedule and its graphics are designed to colorfully and succinctly hit the high points, but more complete ACIP recommendations are only a click away. A key to these useful links can be found on the intro page, along with the list of vaccines, their abbreviations, and brand names. The use of trade names is for identification purposes only and does not imply endorsement by ACIP or CDC, but as a practicing physician, it's helpful to have them listed, especially if you're the one who orders vaccines for your practice. For pneumococcal vaccines, PCV13 has been replaced by PCV15 and PCV20. Brand name Vaxnuvance for the 15 valent version and brand name Prevnar20 for the one that provides protection from 20 pneumococcal subtypes. The opening page header explains how to best use the schedule. Step one, determine recommended vaccinations by age. Refer to table one. Step two, determine if additional vaccines are needed based on medical condition and other indications. Go to table two. Step three, to review vaccine types, frequencies, intervals, and special considerations, see the notes. There's an entry for each vaccine. New for 2022 is step four, check the appendix, which reviews contraindications and precautions for each vaccine type. Let's dive into the details, but first some schedule construction nuts and bolts. Vaccine order is the same on both tables, but it's not alphabetical. Order is artistically arranged to make the graphics eye-catching and attractive, and they are. Table one includes the full vaccine type name and abbreviation. Table two has the abbreviation only. The vaccine notes are in black and white with bold blue headings. Vaccine order in the notes is alphabetical for easy reference. The notes for this year's schedule are not quite as detailed and have more links. Color codes on the graphics stay the same throughout. Yellow means the vaccine's indicated for all who meet the age requirement. Purple means it's indicated for those with additional risk factors or other indications. Blue means it's recommended based on shared clinical decision-making. Orange is for precaution. For red, the words are the same, but the order is different. Contraindicated now comes before the phrase not recommended. The asterisk indicating it's okay to vaccinate after pregnancy is still used. Overlays on red bars have been adjusted to provide more precise clarification of whether a vaccine is really contraindicated or just not recommended. 
other overlays have also been modified for clarity and precision. And finally, there's color code gray, which means there is no recommendation or not applicable. Gray does not mean not recommended. Vaccines not recommended are color coded red. The new schedule has updates reflecting new ACIP vaccination recommendations for zoster, pneumococcal, and hepatitis B. Zoster vaccines now an option for patients aged 19 to 49 with immunocompromising conditions. The notes give more details as to who this includes. This is shown on table one, vaccinations by age, with purple for those aged 19 to 49, with an overlay reminder to check the notes. The yellow bar starting at age 50 means everyone aged 50 and older needs a two-dose Zoster vaccine series. On table two, vaccinations by medical condition and other indications, the new Zoster recommendation for RZV recombinant zoster vaccine is indicated by the yellow bar under immunocompromising conditions with the overlay phrase, two doses starting at age 19. Hepatitis B is now universally recommended for all adults under 60, but there's a loophole in the notes that make Hep B vaccination available to older adults who wish to receive it. There are several Hep B products with various application nuances. Some products have different dosing intervals. The size of the dose and the numbers of doses can vary depending on medical condition, speed of immunization needed, and pregnancy status. For example, one of the newer Hep B products, Heplisav, is not recommended for use in pregnant women for now. It's too new and there's not enough safety data. For Hep B, Table 1, vaccinations by age, is yellow up to age 60. At 60, the bar turns purple, meaning only for adults with an additional risk factor. On Table 2, vaccination by medical conditions, Hep B is yellow across the board with clarifying overlays alluding to the previously mentioned nuances. Again, be sure to check the notes. The new pneumococcal vaccines introduced on the cover page foreshadow a change in pneumococcal recommendations from ACIP. This new recommendation is more streamlined with only two options to choose from, either a sequential vaccination combo of PCV15, then PPSV23, or a single dose of the higher valent PCV20. These choices apply to adults of all ages, but only if indicated. Pneumococcal vaccination is indicated and recommended for all adults 65 and older and for younger adults with certain medical conditions or other risk factors, refer to the notes. On Table 1, Vaccinations by Age, this is shown very clearly. Vaccination options are specified on the overlay. The purple bar for those under 65 with a reminder to see notes. Pneumococcal vaccination is only recommended for those under 65 if they have another risk indication or medical condition. For those 65 and older, the yellow bar means it's recommended for all in this age group. On Table 2, vaccinations by medical condition or other indication, the pneumococcal bar is yellow for all the medical conditions listed, again, with a reminder to check the notes. I know, I sound like a broken record when I keep saying, check the notes, check the notes, but you need to. Vaccine notes are your friends. Read them and use them and click on the links if you need more specifics. Also on table two, check out the dedicated columns for pregnant persons, healthcare personnel, and for men who have sex with men. And there you have it, a quick review of the schedule's four steps, as well as new changes and ACIPs new adult immunization schedule for 2022. For Medicine Matters, I'm Dr. Sandra Freihofer.